G'day champions and welcome back to another episode. We've just tucked down the beach for a late Arvo session. See if we can pick up a few Taylor and Salmon. Maybe try and convert one of them Taylor into a Dewey a bit later, but we'll see what happens. Plenty of good gutters around. So I'm just going to set up at the front of one and we'll get into it. open ends to it, bit of depth, not too far out and a nice bit of foam rolling across the surface. Looks good. And we're going very light today. If I do need to I'll be packing up and heading to another gutter if there's no fish here. So all I've got is the bait which we're going to be using pillies. Um, I won't be using pillies for a Jew, I'll be using slab of tailor or I've got a sneaky squid hidden down the bottom as well. I, uh, Tea towel's pretty good for wiping gunk off your hands as well as laying your rod down um, and protecting it from the sand. But I've brought a rod holder with me today and that's just for um, making it easier to show off the rig and show off the setup for you and baiting up. I wouldn't normally bring that. I'll be fishing with the rod in my hands all the time. And there's times when I definitely do have my rod in a rod holder sitting on the beach, but you are gonna catch more fish if you just have it in your hands. As for the rig, it is super simple. And it's just a running star sinker rig. So what we've got is an easy clip with a star sinker attached. I've got a few different weights there, just gonna find which one holds the bottom the best. Got that sliding on my wind on leader of 30 pounds. Got a little bead protecting the knot down to a swivel. And then a leader of about maybe 40 centimeters, which is even a bit on the long side. You don't need a long, long leader for uh, tailor and salmon. And the longer it is, the harder it is for this rig to cast. And what I've got here is just a set of Gemakatsu Gangster um, Gang Tooks, which I've made up myself, put a little swivel in between and crush, crush the ring on it. And these are sticky sharp. I do like Gemakatsu hooks, but if you're not into making your own, there's a couple alternatives. And you don't really need to fork out too much cash if you're chasing Semin and Taylor. But here's just one of the mustard ones and here's a set of true turn hooks which go pretty damn good but do tend to rust up pretty quickly. They've got this cool design where they've got a bend in the shank of the hook which is supposed to help in setting the hook for fish. If you're buying gangs I do prefer the ones that have a swivel in between. It just makes it easier to bait up and the ones without what you'll find is that sand will get in the road and things and it'll be kind of frustrating to um, bait up your pilly. As for the, the rod and reel, so we've got a 30 pound wind on leader and then I'm using 30 pound braid as well. Mono goes just as well off the beach and for base fishing in most situations. So I've got that on a 12 foot 8 to 12 kilo rod and match that with a 55,000 reel. Right, let's get on to baiting up. And so these are beautiful brined pillies. If you can get them, they're the go. They're just a bit tougher, very oily, have a nice smell to them. But if you can't get brined ones, just get individually quick frozen ones. They're gonna do just as well. These are just a bit tougher. And for putting a pilly on a hook, pretty damn simple. We're just gonna line up the hooks and see where the bottom one's coming out. Where this one's gonna be right down the base of the tail. And what you can do if it was if it was a longer pilly and say uh, lining up with the eye, it was going there. What you can do is press in the bottom hook against there. It's gonna form a nice little indentation where you know where you're gonna put it through. But we know it's just gonna go right down at the bottom here. And then we're just gonna go through, I like going on the underside of the spine, but right next to it, just like that. And then lastly through the eye. Perfect. Then I just like to give the, the pillie a little bit of a pull down so that this top hook is the one that's supporting the bait. It's the toe point. It's going to make sure it swims nice and straight. So there we go. 
So this is the rig I use for 90% of my fishing for Taylor Salmon and Jew. It's this sliding star sinker rig. I just changed the, the poundage of the line and the hook, the hook set up at the end for different species or for Jew. And it's probably out of the rigs I use. I reckon it's gonna have the best hook set rate of the others, which is usually a pattern star or slide bait rig. The only downfall of it is that it doesn't cast too far, but we've got a gutter that's nice and close for us here today. So that's not gonna be an issue. So you just wanna make sure that star sink is setting nice and firm in the sand and winding up the slack. waiting for any bites. The salmon's just going to be a nice big hit where a tailor's going to feel like a bit of a rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. 30 pound is pretty light for a, um, a big tailor. They will chew that through that pretty quick. But with pillies and gang hooks, you're generally always going to hook them on the outside of the head. A way a tailor feeds is they'll come up and snip the tail off something and then come back for the rest. So you'll usually just hook them on the bottom or second from the bottom hook. And we've got one. Hopefully it's a tailor. And just like uh, catching brim off the beach, catching anything off the beach, just take your time at the back of the shore break here, wait for a wave to bring him in. So he's just there, just gonna wait for this wave. We'll bring him up. We'll see what we got. Oh, we've actually got a fuddy. Look at that. Not a bad fuddy either. So there we go. Not a bad bit of bycatch. Definitely a legal fish, but I'm not going to take him home. Well, despite it looking pretty good, there wasn't much action in that gutter. So we're just going to head up to this next one here, see if we can get a couple. Got him. Only tiny little pecks. It could even be a brim, this. If we didn't just drop him. I think we still got him. Hopefully it's a tail up, but I'm thinking a brim. No, we've got a tail, are you ripper? Well, there's a dewy bait for later. Nice, and that's the result of moving gutters. Was getting nothing down there. So we've come up here. That was second bait, I think. So there we have that tailor. Great little eating size one, but he's also going to be perfect for dewy baits. So winter is definitely prime time for tailor and salmon. You can get them year round, but they definitely increase in numbers during the winter months and what we've got at the moment is a high tide in about an hour 40 and again you can catch them all over the tide as well but there's just got to be enough water in the gutter for them to want to come in where there's definitely plenty already now and dawn and dusk periods are also great I mean through the night is probably prime time for big Taylor off the beach but coming up to that high tide, I'm going to stop chasing the tailor and salmon, change the rig slightly, and then go after a dewy. All right, hopefully another little tailor. Oh, just did a jump, might be a little salmon. It is only a very small fish, this one might go out whole. Let him go back down if this way and then bring him up with this one. Beautiful, another little tailor. Now if I had the big gear with me, that one would be going out whole.
but instead I'll cut him up into a couple slabs. That is going to be Primo Dewey bait. Got another one. Oh, this one might be a salmon the way it just jumps. But we won't complain if it is. I did say I was showing off how to catch Taylor and salmon. But truth be told, I'd be happier if it was another Taylor. Yeah, I think this is a salmon. Let's see if we get him up with this wave. Oh, it looks like we're not quite gonna. This one will bring him up. Yeah, so there's the salmon. Beautiful. Oh, he's got a big chunk taken out of him. Right, yeah, and there's that salmon. And something's had a good chew on him. Could be a shark or a dolphin or a seal. But anyways, I'm gonna keep him for a little bit of bait as well in case that tailor goes pretty quick. And with the light fading, I think that's gonna be about time to wrap it up. I might show off any more fish I catch if it looks any good. But that's been a very brief introduction to Taylor and Seven off the beach. I'll also show off a Dewey if I get one, but I don't think the footage is gonna look very good at night, unfortunately. Anyways, you might see some footage, otherwise I'll catch you next time. Another decent salmon. That one took a bit of tailor. Little blind shark or dogfish. We'll get him back. Well, boys, I think we hooked him. Come on. If it's a salmon, it's the biggest salmon I've ever got. I'd say we've got a Dewey. He's not gonna be a record breaker, but any Dewey is a Dewey. Where is he? He should just be at the back of the shore here somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah baby, Yew. nice big head shakes, and yeah, just like anything else, gonna have to take me time landing him. Love it. Oh, I'm gonna be gutted if it's a shark, but everything's telling me Dewey. It's just here in the foamy water. There he was, there he was. This is gonna bring you up nice and high. Oh, and where are you? He's just here at your feet. There he is. Come on. Come on. Oh no, back into the gutter. I'm sure you guys aren't seeing much at all, but hopefully we get him in and I can give you a look at him. This is it, we've got him. Yo Ripper! Dewey! Yoo-hoo! Look at that beast. Bloody oath, he's gonna be. I can just over that meter mark. 
my brag mats all the way up near me bag. He's taking his 50 metres down the beach. I'm just going to get the hooks out of him and get him back. But what a fish. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> Look at this hook. Just through the lip. Where? Wow. Hooks out of him. Have a look at them. Absolutely beautiful. And you do really want to fish the tides for these things. Look at that. Woohoo! Right, let's get him back. See if I can just hold him up for the camera just a little bit. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. All right, let's get him back. There he is, one last time. Just thought I'd... Oh, oh better. Whoa. Turn the torch on wide so you can see him. Look at that, that fish. All right, fella. Time to go back. I'm not going to be able to go too far in. I've got my waders on, but he hasn't been out of the water long. I reckon he's going to be pretty sweet. We just keep an eye on the waves if he comes back up on the beach. We'll make sure to put him back in, but we're just going to say, see you later, mate. go what I'll quickly do now because I'm sure you're going to be wondering I'll show off the rig and that was on Taylor I'll show you how I like to bait up my Taylor slabs all right guys here is the Mulloway rig I just got that one on so all it is is a two hook Snell rig and these are little 6-0 Gemakatsu octopus hooks any suicide or octopus hooks in a good quality and 6 -0 up to about 8 -0 if you're using really big baits and I like using FC rock fluorocarbon in 50 pound and you can do a little um, handy little hack with these things or if you just cut a bit of stubby alder and slip it on you've got a good little line retention thing on there and I won't show off um, doing the knots here because GoPros don't have the best close focus and there's plenty of people that have already done them. So I'll link down in the description just how I like to snell them. But I like to keep them as in line as possible as I can. And you're gonna change the distance between them depending on the baits you wanna use. But that's a good distance right there for most of your slab baits. And I've just got a mullet here to demonstrate, which is also a really good bait for um, Mulloway if you can, or Jewfish if you can get them fresh. So what I've done is I've scaled this and I would scale my mullet and scale my salmon as well. Don't bother with Taylor, but I do that to um, make it a little bit easier to bait. I reckon it's good to get a bit more scent in the water. Plus you're not gonna have to worry about a scale slipping over the tip of your hook and stopping a good hook set. So all I'm going to do is knock the fillet off this guy. There we go, bit of a rough job, but that'll be right. And with a fish this small, I'm basically only going to get two good baits out of it. And that's going to be from this tail section. So depending on the hook length, the baits are going to run somewhat like this. So I'm going to cut this one right here. And if this, this was a bigger fish, like a bigger tailor or a um, bigger salmon, what I would then do is I'd slice down here and get three strip baits out of it. But because it's a pretty little fish, I'm just going to slice straight down the middle. And that right there is going to be one bait. But what, what I then also like to do is just make a bit of a point at the end where our, our top hook's going to go. 
and that hopefully is going to prevent any spin from happening in the current. So it's going to take a little bit off each side. And there is our bait ready to go. So you're just going to go the top hook right up near the tip through the skin side. Like that. And then see where the bottom hook wants to go through. It's going to be about there. And there we have it. A Primo bait. You definitely want there to be a tiny bit of slack in this line here. If that's tight, you, your uh, bait's just going to spin around. And that's what I got that dewy on. If it was a bit of a wider fish as well, with this belly section, what I'd do is cut that into strips like this. And then I'd do the same thing. You can sharpen that up if you want, but I'd just go the top hook through this section here, bottom hook down through there, and you've got another little bait. Well, boys, I'm a glutton for punishment. This was the second bait out in the water, just after that first one. Yes! Two in a night! Ah, oh, you wouldn't dream about it. Ah, oh, man, worth it. Worth braving the cold. You gotta love it. Wow, so much weight. Wow. This could be a really good fish. Just got to make sure we don't head too far down the beach because there's a bit of a bit of reef another 70 metres down or so. Oh. Come on. Do a big head shake so I know you're a Jew. Jesus. I think we got a shark. Holy moly. Although, it, if it is a shark, you'd think it would have bitten through by now. Give me some line. Give me some line, mate. Where are there some weight there? Or is it an eagle ray, maybe? Because it kind of just feels like he's suction to the bottom at the moment. Yeah, he could be. And the way that there hasn't been any uh, any great big head shakes. shakes alright guys I've been fighting this thing for uh, must be up to an hour maybe and I'm not winning it just will not come up onto the uh, flat so I think I'm just going to clamp down the drag Try not to break the rod, it will probably snap him off. So every time we get him close, it will just go for another run. Right here, we've got him up pretty close now. Come on. Whoop. 
you can just suction into the sand and it won't get anywhere and then you ride the waves down. Yeah. That's the closest I've got. And then he's just straight back out into the gutter. Crank it up a bit. A bit more, why not? Oh. And I don't think we're gonna land him. Well, there he is, guys. That is an absolute moose of an eagle ray. Absolutely huge. I'm just going to bust him off and then he can get washed back in. Oh, man, oh man. There we go. There he goes. Holy shit. Well, cheers for watching. Catch you next time. Woo!